what is a motion and an order. Uh, moments ago, our office filed with the clerk of the Shawnee County District Court a motion to introduce the investigation records of this case under seal. The purpose for filing the motion under seal is because I have placed before the uh, detective mummy at this time all of the investigative records that I received as associate counsel from the district attorney's office. In my desire to protect the rights of the defendant to a fair trial, I didn't want these records to become public until it was appropriate for them to be. And it is important for this court, since these records are normally not re released at this stage of the uh, proceedings, that these records be received under seal by the court, because I'm gonna ask that the court review these as evidence in de determining whether or not to allow this case to proceed. I have provided counsel with a copy of the motion and the order, and prior to moving for the admission of those records into evidence, I would ask that the court grant my motion to file them under seal. Now you testified about uh, the affidavit that you prepared. When was the last time you looked at that? Um, I looked over it briefly this morning. Okay, you're familiar with the contents? Somewhat, yes. Okay. And you would agree that the affidavit does not contain all of the facts that are revealed during the investigation, correct? Correct. And the investigation included Topeka Police Department reports, correct? Correct. They included Shawnee County Sheriff's Office reports, correct? Correct. Um, the investigation also included um, the inquisitions of Daniel Lamas, correct? Most of these interviews that were done in this case were concluded within the first week, so by the 24th of March, actually, right? Yeah. And then you regrouped and you went out and asked some other questions. So one of the things that kept you from concluding this investigation was that the Lamases wouldn't talk to you, is that correct? Correct. You said you or somebody else sent Bill Vaughn down to the hospital after they'd been released from intensive care, correct? I believe so, yes. And when that investigator arrived, uh, he was told that there were people in there talking to the brothers that, hey, it's, it's okay for you to go in, correct? I believe so, yes. And he went in and talked to them, and both of them told him that they were too drunk to remember what had happened. Uh, without returning to the courts, I don't answer that question. Okay. I, I do know that they informed me that they were intoxicated, yes. And they couldn't remember what happened because they were intoxicated. Who's do you want to see? Do you want to see Bill's, Bill Vaughn's? It would probably have to be Detective Vaughn's, yes. That first two days, that we, that first day, we were nonstop talking. We, each of us had different roles we were playing, but we were trying to communicate as much as possible. He was letting me know what he needed to do next, what I was trying to help him out to prepare interview rooms, uh, provide food to individuals, just helping out. Okay. Uh, do you recall whether or not uh, Detective Mummy, in fact, did conduct interviews in this case? He did, yes. Do you recall whether or not he interviewed the witnesses to this matter? He, as well as a number of officers, investigators, as well as I, interviewed uh, witnesses in this case. Are you familiar with uh, the process uh, through which the case agent after having concluded uh, his or her investigation of the case, prepares uh, a memorandum or a report to be reviewed by the district attorney's office. There's a couple ways that that can be done. Privilege to tell you everything that they would like to, to give you all of the reasons that they object and all of the substantiation for that objection. And once they've done that, then the court can dismiss the case. So as a result, I don't believe that they presented anything further that would, it, this isn't the best word, but it's the only word that comes to mind, that would allow the court to override the ability of the prosecutor to dismiss this case. And 
based upon that, I ask, because I don't know what else to call it, for a judgment of acquittal. And ask that you not shift the burden on the defendant. Do you have a response? Nineteen seven one seven grants me the authority to object to the dismissal of this action. The special prosecutor has not provided this court with evidence to suggest that this matter should be dismissed, which is compelling enough for this court to do so. Quite the contrary. There hasn't been an allegation that a single fact has changed. There hasn't been an allegation that something new has been discovered. There hasn't been an allegation that the Sheriff's Department in their investigation did anything wrong that was discovered. All the facts have remained exactly the same. The only difference is the opinion of the special prosecutor in this matter. That's it. It's her opinion. She has not provided this court with one bit of evidence to suggest that there's something new for this court to consider. And as a result, what the court has at this moment is the, tech, the testimony of Detective Mummy, who did an exhaustive investigation of this case, an investigation that was overseen by <coughs> Lieutenant Kibden. Both of them have told you that they stand behind their findings in the affidavit. An affidavit that, when taken to Judge Conklin, was determined to be of sufficient probable cause to issue an arrest warrant, followed by a hearing in this courtroom when Mr. Lemon challenged the sufficiency of the probable cause affidavit that this court already ruled was sufficient to proceed. What we now have is a difference of opinion between Ms. Carl and I. And she doesn't present to you any reason other than her opinion on the weight of the evidence to suggest that the matter should be dismissed. But with all of the history involved in this case, I suggest to you that the motion made by Mr. Lemon should be denied. I don't know how this case is going to end up if it goes to trial. It may well be that a jury acquits Mr. Judd. It may be that a jury, after listening to all of the evidence in this case, looks at Mr. Judd and says, you're innocent, or you're not guilty. But it is also possible that that same jury may look at him and say, you're guilty. I don't know what the jury's going to do. You don't know that. Ms. Carlin, nobody in this room knows that. But the interest of justice in this community require a fair hearing of this matter. The interest of justice requires that this matter be thoroughly reviewed by those that matter through first having a preliminary hearing conducted. Because there has been no preliminary hearing in this case to begin with. And it may be that at a preliminary hearing, when a prosecutor presents all of the evidence, again, that a judge may look at Mr. Judd and says, I find no probable cause. It may be that a district court judge in this jurisdiction looks at Mr. Judd and says, there is probable cause to proceed. But this moment, this time, is not the moment or the time to make that decision. Because there has not been a sufficient amount of evidence presented to you. Our community needs to know what happened here. People deserve better than this. We need to know. And if the law did not permit me to object, well, perhaps we would be in a different situation. But here, I do have the authority. And for that authority to mean anything, it is important for you to be able to use 
your immense power of discretion in this matter. And at the very least, what the court is presented with at this time is a fact question. A fact question. Because as the officers testifying here today stated, not everything in the record is in the affidavit. We are not. We are arguing that the, the motion that Mr. Lemon uh, just made. But for 19717, this case would have already been dismissed. The state, as you know, has the discretion to dismiss charges in a criminal case. But because of KSA 19717, we're here today. Now, the court told us in the conference call that we did not have to present evidence. And the statute does not require it of any of the parties. The statute only requires that the state file a writing its reasons for dismissal, that the attorney for the victim has the opportunity to object, the court can hear oral argument and fully consider the matter. And you determined that in order to fully consider the matter, you wanted this hearing. And again, you did not require us to present any evidence if we did not so choose, which I'm relying on the written briefs that I've submitted as well as oral argument that I will have today. This is not a fact question, quite frankly. The, the question is whether or not I can ethically proceed as a prosecutor based upon the facts that I've determined them to be, based upon the voluminous amount of reports that I've reviewed. It's not a question of fact. It's a question of my ethical responsibilities as a prosecutor. So I've complied with 19717 up until this point. I have filed my reasons, which normally in a, in a any other criminal case, I wouldn't have to do. As you know, I can just enter dismissal if I want to. But because of the requirements of 19717, I filed my reasons in writing. We are now here today so that you can fully consider the matter, Your Honor. Um, I would join Mr. Levin in the court dismissing the case at this point for all of the reasons and explanations contained in my written briefs and based upon some additional facts that, that support the facts that I've alleged in my brief that Jason Jeff was acting in lawful self-defense. So at this point, I would join Mr. Levin in, in uh, dismissing the case. And quite frankly, at this point, if you're not going to dismiss all of the charges, I ask that you dismiss um, count three, which is the count involving Damian Cooper, who is not represented by counsel. And Mr. Agranabrai has no reason to object um, to that count. Mr. Lemon? No, Your Honor. Mr. Yvonne Rye, uh, just with the last, just the last issue. Well, I understand. I, I would respectfully request that um, the court also consider the allegations against uh, 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 Mr. Judd as it relates to Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper may not be here, and I do not represent him, but still, um, I suggest that as uh, a, a, a social counsel, that those charges should also remain and allow a jury to make those, or at least go through the process of a preliminary hearing to determine what the outcome of those charges are. I think uh, Ms. Carl is exactly right with regard to count three. Uh, to the extent that Mr. Arizona Wright does not represent Mr. Damien Cooper, the only uh, objection he has is on behalf of the victims that he represents. And so the court would dismiss count three and a reserve ruling on the remainder. I want to hear the, the rest of the evidence uh, that apparently, uh, should, should Mr. Lemon uh, choose to proceed on and present witnesses, I would like to hear that evidence before I make my decision. I do need to fully consider. I differ with Ms. Carl, as I, I mentioned in my uh, memorandum decision. I think there are facts that are driving uh, her reasons for uh, her motion to dismiss. And so I would like to have some more uh, evidence 